what's up guys welcome back to my channel uh, today I am going to be continuing my bands of color series uh, today we're going to talk about pinata protest they are a band from Austin Texas and they formed in 2013 I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of background history of what this kind of music is uh, pinata protest does a thing where they kind of mix coreados with punk uh, which is really interesting it's not anything I ever really heard of and as a matter of fact I didn't even hear about Pinata Protest until I started digging deeper into Fea, which is my first episode. I'll link it down below so you guys can check it out. Um, if you guys watched the video or watched Fea's video for Mujer Mordena, uh, they were the guys who were in that video who were playing like the really gross, creepy guys. Um, so that's how I found out about Pinata Protest. But I'm gonna give you guys some background story or some background history of what Curiados are, in case you've never heard of them before. Curiados were basically a really simple melody um, accompanied with a guitar. Uh, they are performed in 3-4 times, so it's basically like a waltz or a polka. Probably closer to like a polka. And they've basically come a really long way since their commercialization. Um, they've basically often been performed with the conjuntas, which quite literally translates to uh, a group. So they went from being a one-person thing to a group thing. Uh, Corridos are often about oppression, daily life of peasants, um, history, what's happening currently socially. Um, and Corridos are actually really, really important to Mexican history because before the TV and the radio like really became a thing and really became accessible to everybody, this is how people got their news. Um, so like news would happen in one town, people would write a song about it, that song would spread rough throughout Mexico, and that's how people in like really small towns and really, really small pueblos would find out about what was happening, about the news. This was actually also a really good way to spread news because a lot of people at the time were illiterate. This is before people and like the government itself started taking education really seriously. So again, like a lot of the people didn't know how to read, so it didn't really matter if newspapers were being delivered to them because they couldn't read it. So Corridos basically took a really big turn um, in between the Mexican War of Independence and the Mexican Revolution. This is where all of their like really epic or tones started coming in. Um, this is where like the stories got really grand and the music got really like big, um, a lot of more instruments were joining in. Corridos were also in, a, in another way a really big part of Mexican history because during the Mexican Revolution, this was how um, the people of Mexico who were on the front grounds and like involved in the war got to spread like actual information and people from the small towns were being blasted with like propaganda about how um, Mexico was losing and like all this other false information and so this is basically how the people who were involved in the war got to spread like the actual information. They wrote these songs about them. Information spread to the towns. People didn't lose hope. Um, really big part of history. The combination of the political era after the Mexican Revolution War uh, with the success of electronic media pushed Curidos from being a source of communication and news uh, and pushed it into separating into two different branches. So there was a branch that was really into folklore and really into like those really simple melodies. And then there was the branch that talked about the oppression of workers, of there was a lot of talk of like traffickers and drug dealers and drug smugglers and all of that. Uh, basically, there's also a branch of corridos that are called narco corridos. And they are basically paid for by big time drug lords. Write these songs about these people to make them kind of boost their egos up and kind of make them feel more important than I guess they are. Uh, but basically in like Mestizo Mexico, um, all the forms of corridos are still alive and well. There is the romance, revolutionary, and the modern. Earlier I said that corridos were a way of spreading information. Um, eventually later on, like once that branch kind of fell off, uh, corridos also became a way of like telling love stories. So they could be about romance, about women, they can be about um, stories that these guys made up. I mean, it just like really branched off from being a source of communication to being a source of just like music and fun and a way of life. So that's basically the little bit of background on videos. There's definitely like a huge, huge history on them. I suggest that you do a little bit of research, look it up. Um, a lot of people don't like videos. A lot of people think it sounds like circus music, which 
I mean, it's kind of like polka, which also kind of sounds like circus music sometimes. I'm a fan of polka, but that's just me. Uh, so that I give you guys a little bit of background information, I'm going to jump into my review of Pinata Protest and why you guys should listen to them. Uh, so here we go. So Pinata Protest's last album came out in 2013, so I am way behind. Um, again, like I said, I didn't even hear about them until I uh, started doing my fan review. Now this album is called El Valiente and it has super awesome album art. It's got a luchador, a rooster, a snake, an accordion. Super cool. It looks really, really... Mexican, for lack of a better word. Uh, so the intro to the album starts off like it would be a weird techno album. Um, it actually sounds like the intro to like, you know when you go to the theaters and you sit down and it does like that and goes to tell you that it's like an HD or whatever. Uh, that's basically what this sounds like. Um, they talk in Spanish, which I will note, um, like Fea, uh, Pinata Protest is kind of like a Spanglish bilingual band, um, so they very much interchangeably use Spanish and English in their songs. Um, they mix it all up in one sentence. There's not really a pattern to it. Some words, I, in my opinion, just sound better in Spanish than they do in English. Uh, I feel like a lot of people who speak Spanglish agree. In the song Vato Peron, they're basically talking about how they're like a super cool guy. They just like do very manly things. Um, talks about how he is and a gang, he does voodoo, he drinks all day and dances cumbias at night. It's basically a song being like, just a bunch of guys being dudes, this is what we do. We're super tough and we're cool and we drink all day and we dance all night and we look at these ladies and they're all super hot and it's a fun song. Um, Perones is a slang word, it basically just means cool guy or tough guy. The song Life on the Border is really interesting to me. Being an immigrant carries a lot of its own problems. Um, one of them is that you kind of enter a sort of identity crisis. If you're Puerto Rican for the U.S., you're not Puerto Rican enough to be on the island. Same thing with Mexicans um, and people from Latin America in general. You know, you're too Spanish for the U.S., you're not Spanish enough to be in Mexico. It's a problem that a lot of immigrants have. Um, however, in the song Life on the Border, he bas they basically talk about how they're proud of being born, like, on the border. They're proud of having two identities. They mix them interchangeably. Let's you know flag, people tell them, like, you look weird, you're not from around here. Um, and they basically say, like, my life is a tightrope. I walk along this fine line, but this is the only life that I know. Like, I'm born on the border. I have a lot of pride in my Mexican side, I have a lot of pride in my American side, and that's what this is. That's what my life is. I'm not going to choose a side. I'm not going to say that I'm one more than the other. Um, um, he also goes into this in the last part of the song. He says, uh, nameless, not aimless, no side to declare, no need or desire. I'm not stuck. I declare life on the border. I've lived my whole life. I'm weaving and dancing, ascended sublime. Um, so he's basically saying that, like, he doesn't really feel the need to pick a side. He doesn't feel like he needs to say, like, oh, I'm Mexican, but I'm raised in America, or I'm American, but I'm, you know, my family's Mexican. Uh, Tomorrow Today is the third song on the album. It's a really fun song. They're basically they're like a party song. They're talking about how they, again, like <laughs> drink all day, they drink all night, you know, like anything that they do today, they'll regret it tomorrow, but today we're gonna have fun. Guadalupe is another interesting song. My interpretation of it, I've looked at the lyrics and, you know, I've listened to the song a couple of times. Um, I believe it's a song about how he finds a woman who cares a lot about him, who he kind of takes advantage of. You know, it's basically this woman who has like given him everything, she's given him her soul, food, a home, she keeps watching out for him, she keeps trying to take care of him. Um, he basically, uh, and he keeps saying that she's been crucified, it's no mistake that you've been crucified. Um, which again, if you're going to compare it to like a religious thing, like Jesus, you know, he literally gave his life for people. So, just, he's just comparing her to like Jesus and being like, you've given me everything, you're sacrificing yourself for me. Um, and it doesn't really sound like he cares. El Valiente, which is the title track of this album, is about a one night stand. The song is basically, quite literally, he takes a chance, he sees a girl from like across the room at a club, or you know, some kind of dancing place. Um, I clearly go out a lot. Takes a chance, tips his hat, asks her to dance. They're dancing, he takes another risk. He says, hey, do you wanna have a one night stand? And she says, sure, they go back home. And he treats her like a queen, he romances her. 
in the morning he leaves, which is what they agreed on. And then he talks again about how he is out late, he goes to her house, he knocks on her door, you know, she eventually, she opens the door, lets him in, they have another one night stand, he leaves again in the morning. Um, in this song he also does say that this is what he likes to do, he likes to go out, he likes to party, he likes to hook up, he likes to leave, he doesn't want to be dedicated to one person, he doesn't want to be in a relationship, he just wants to have one night stands, and if this girl's fine with that, then this girl's fine with that, and that's totally fine. All in all, I think Banana Protest did a really good job on this album. I think that it really follows the trend of what Gorillaz were when they started and what they are now. Their first album definitely had a lot more commentary on like peasant life and like what it was like growing up. They still had like some songs about romance and all that. Home Plethora was definitely more of a commentary. Um, it talked a lot about not knowing who you are, not knowing what your destiny is. Um, they talk about like having a dead end job. Um, their song Jackie is about a girl who is like trying to run away to find herself but she doesn't really know what she's looking for. Um, so I feel like their first album was a lot more of a commentary about like what life was like, what their life was like, and what it was like to like live these peasant lives. Whereas El Valiente is definitely more of like a party album. There's more of a commentary of being like a tough guy and like a party guy and like kind of knowing that you don't want to be in a relationship, you kind of just want to go out and party. And this is more definitely of an album of like knowing who you are and knowing what you want in life as opposed to their first album where they didn't really know what they were looking for. It felt kind of hopeless to like go out and look for yourself and you don't know who you are. So yeah, um, you can find their album, on both albums actually, on Spotify. Uh, they have a Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. I will link that all down below if you guys do want to check it out. I do suggest that you check out this band. They're really fun, especially if you do like ska or polka or waltzes. I don't know if people like, like waltzes, but they're definitely a fun band. Give it a try if you are looking for something new, looking for something different, looking for something that's like really, really upbeat. Um, but kind of serious commentary. They've got a fine line. They walk a tightrope. Um, so yeah, so this is my album review. Let me know if you want me to do a review on Plethora, which is their first album. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If you have any bands that you're interested in hearing my thoughts on, if there is a playlist you want me to put together, if you have any band suggestions that you think I should cover, Go ahead, leave that all down below, and I will get back to you. As usual, if you have any questions about mental health, about depression, depersonalization, if you want to know my opinions on anything, uh, if you just need somebody to talk to, go ahead, leave that comment down below, or reach out to me on my Instagram or my Twitter. I will definitely, definitely get back to you. And just know that you are loved, and I'm here for you if you have nobody else to talk to. Um, and that concludes my album review, and I will see you guys next week.